Hello everyone, it's Karishma and welcome back to my channel where we are always trying to make Earth great again. Um, I hope you all are staying safe and today we're talking about 20 things that I do not buy. And before we get into the video, I'm going to say this at the start this time is subscribe if you like my content. That would make me very, very happy. Um, I know this isn't my usual filming spot, but I'm joined by Zara who's extremely comfy right now so you can't see her, but she'll probably pop her head up a couple times during the video. Um, but yeah, if you like my content, subscribe, like this video, follow me on Instagram, it's at Mega Karishma, Mega standing for Make Earth Great Again, and let's get into this video. So I first got thinking about things that I don't buy when I was watching videos by Shelby, who's one of my favorite YouTubers in the sustainability space, and she kind of talked about this phrase that she coined called eco-minimalism. Eco-minimalism means when you live minimalistically, minimally I guess, um, for the sake of the environment. So recognizing that all the stuff that we have, all the stuff that we buy, it comes from somewhere. It comes, it's made from resources that are taken from the earth and then it's processed and then it's packaged and then it's shipped to us. And this whole chain is extremely carbon intensive, more for some products, less for others, but carbon intensive to make, um, resource intensive. And then a lot of these items on my list are also single use, so it ends up being waste. I do want to caveat though that I'm not a minimalist. I know a lot of minimalist YouTubers make this video, X amount of things that I don't buy. Um, I'm not a minimalist. I like stuff and I'm just on this journey of realizing that there's a lot of stuff that society tells me that I need and that I can't live without and I'm realizing that wait I actually don't need any of those things. And this is a great way to not only be eco-friendly but also to save money. I do want to acknowledge that a lot of people do this purely for the purposes of saving money so kudos to you. That's just an added benefit of living this way. So for everyone that says living sustainably is only for the rich and famous, no. Watch this video. Her mom just walked in to make her coffee. You guys can say hi. <laughs> <laughs> is there anything that a lot of people buy or society maybe think makes you think that you need that you don't buy? Um, something that we don't need? Yeah. I know that in my kitchen I have a lot of um, extra dishes so yeah. extra dinner dinnerware yeah tableware yeah we i don't do. need we those many we have two drawers for cutlery in this house we have two i definitely succumb to nice you know new pretty new trends yes yeah. <laughs> okay well thank you without further ado further ado without further ado um in no particular order let's get into this list so number one on this list is Q-tips or cotton earbuds. I've never bought these. And you'll see me go through this list and mention some things that I'll say, you know what, I used to buy these things and then I realized that I don't need them. But cotton earbuds or Q-tips, I've never bought them. Um, first of all, they're made of cheap disposable plastic. So once they're done, they could end up in the ocean and then literally stay there forever. There's this one picture of a seahorse that was circulating um, on the media and it was had its tail wrapped around a q-tip and you know we don't need that in our oceans we don't really need it in our life and i've heard that q-tips are actually bad for you like they push the earwax deeper in your ear like why did i start with talking about earwax i i don't know um if you have an earwax problem see your doctor the q-tip is going to make it worse so you can live without those number two on my list is air fresheners and these are things like febreze and glade and i used to buy these until i looked into it and i found out that they contain chemicals that can irritate asthma they can cause neurotoxicity um, and they can also potentially act as hormone disruptors which me and my PCOS, we, we don't need that. Air fresheners are also packaged in metal, which is extremely resource intensive. So again, when you're done with it, you throw it out, even though it took so many resources and energy to get that out of the ground to make that can. There are alternatives. You can use incense sticks. I personally love soy candles, or you can even open a window. Groundbreaking. Like, have you guys seen the flavors of Febreze? Not flavors the scents of Febreze that there are out there. There's like one called Thai dragon fruit. I'm, I'm never gonna buy that. My room is never gonna smell like a Thai dragon fruit because it's not a Thai dragon fruit. Number three on this list is fabric softener. What does this stuff even do? What does it do? I've never used fabric softener. I've always just used detergent and my clothes have been, you know, hygienic, safe, 
clean. They usually come packaged in like big hard plastic bottles. So again, not great for the environment. Trust me, you don't need fabric softener. They also contain things like, things like phthalates, I think it is, which are again, hormone disruptors, not good for you. Stick with your detergent. I've been using detergent my whole life and guess what? My fabric is still soft. We're okay. Number four on this list of items I don't buy is dryer sheets. And do you guys wanna know why I don't buy dryer sheets? That's because I don't use the dryer. I hang dry my clothes, so I use that little rack, the wire rack to hang dry my clothes on, which works well for me. And not gonna lie, I used to buy dryer sheets, but then I had this traumatic incident where the dryer ripped my favorite bra like in two. And I was absolutely horrified and I swore off dryers. And honestly, my, my clothes are better for it. Like no rips, no holes, no pilling. You're also saving energy that way. You're saving money through that. So great option to just not use the dryer. Number five is toilet paper. Hot topic nowadays. Seeing lots of people go to the store and stockpile toilet paper. Could it be me? I use a bidet and I don't want to talk about poop for too long, but if you get poop on your hands, are you wiping it or are you washing it with water? Think about it. You can get a bidet for like $20 at Home Depot or any other home store and install it into your toilet and it works just fine. Number six on my list is disposable masks. And for those of you that follow my Instagram, I talked about this in a post that I made recently, but unless you're sick or you're working as a frontline worker, you don't need these surgical masks that are disposable because at the end of the day, they do end up as a form of waste on our planet because they're single use. So an alternative for you would be to buy a fabric reusable mask and there's tons of places you could get these. Number one is Facebook. There's a bunch of community crisis response groups that have been set up where people are selling masks for like zero to five dollars. You could find one on Etsy and support local sellers um, and they're also really cute. And three, you could DIY one. There's tons of tutorials here on YouTube. I'll link my favorite one down below um, to make a mask out of spare fabric you have at home, an elastic band, and just like basic sewing skills. So get yourself a cloth mask unless you're a frontline worker or you're sick. You can't have coffee, though. It's bad for you. No. Number seven on my list is plastic bottles. Why are we still using... Oh, hello. Do you have an opinion on this? Number seven on my list is plastic bottles. Why are we still using these in 2020? If you live in an area with tap water that's safe to drink and is clean, then get yourself a reusable bottle. There's tons of cute options online that you can choose from and you'll be saving so much plastic in the process. If you don't like the taste of your tap water, you can get a Brita filter or you can look it up online. There's tons of ways to improve the flavor of your tap water instead of buying plastic bottles every time you get thirsty. That is insanely wasteful. There's definitely steps that we can take to reduce our plastic bottle usage. Number eight in the same train of thought is plastic bags. And I know this is hard, with the crisis going on right now, I've been refused my reusable bags at a couple grocery stores a few times, but I think it's getting better now. I think more places are starting to accept your reusable bag or they're saying, you know what, you can bring your reusable bag, but we won't touch it. You have to bag your groceries yourself. That sounds fine to me. And nowadays you literally have to buy plastic bags at the store. Like you pay 10 cents or 25 cents a bag. So if you get yourself a reusable bag, you're saving money too. And another plus is that tote bags are so are cute like it's a fashion accessory why would you not want to wear a tote bag to the grocery store i have a few festive items coming up so at number nine we have gift wrap um i used to buy gift wrap but now i started wrapping my gifts in newspaper i did this for my secret santa last year and you might think it's ratchet but it's cute trust me it's cute and i know a lot of us get newspaper delivered to us that we don't read and so instead of just sending that to the landfill or I guess recycling or composting it, you could get one more use out of it instead of buying gift wrap. Here's a couple pictures that I got from Pinterest just to show you guys that it is cute. Similar to the last one, number 10 is gift bags. It's just another layer of wrap. Like why do we buy these? Why can we not just, just give it? Like, here you go. Why do we have to put it in a bag? We don't have to. I don't think gift bags are something you need to buy. Number 11 might be a little bit of an unpopular opinion, there's no shortage of those here, so I'm just gonna go ahead and say it. It's flower bouquets. Now, I know we love to give and receive flower bouquets and they are so pretty. And I've definitely bought and received these in the past, 
but I read a very interesting article by Fox recently, which I'll link in the description below, which kind of talks about the impact of Valentine's Day. They mentioned that most freshly cut flowers, first of all, are grown overseas. They have to be cut and then transported on a plane or a truck to where they need to be sold in a grocery store. I don't know about you, but I literally struggle to grow flowers indoors, let alone on a plane or a truck. And for that reason, the plane and the truck and the whatever other vehicle, a train or whatever, needs to be refrigerated so that the flowers can stay looking fresh and it needs to have the exact amount of oxygen, carbon dioxide and humidity inside the space so that the flowers aren't wilted. And that takes a lot of energy. So not only is it carbon intensive to grow these flowers and to get them to you, ship them across the world, but also there's so much energy involved in just keeping them alive during transit. A good alternative is to find a small grower that grows flowers that are in season or even just picking wildflowers can be really cute and using that as a bouquet instead. Something that I started doing is I started asking for and giving house plants instead of flower bouquets. Um, kind of got me a house plant as a Valentine's gift a couple years ago. Here's my little Valentine's Day plant. I know he's tilted to the side, but this is the plant that taught me the importance of turning your plants because they will, they will turn to face the sun, which is why you need to keep turning them or they will end up wonky like this guy. He's healthy, but he's a little wonky. We love him anyway. Number 12, while we are on this train of unpopular opinions is foil balloons. This one gets me, this one really gets me. You know those balloons that we buy at the dollar store and then we fill them up with helium just for the Instagram pic on our birthday. Stop, we don't need that, we don't need that. We use them for one photo and they will literally remain on the earth forever. And I don't know if you guys know this, but turtles often mistake balloons in particular for their prey, which is jellyfish. And so they eat the balloon and they choke on it. And so, you know, y'all stop using straws for hashtag save the turtles. So let's ditch the foil balloons too. I'm sure there's a lot of other creative birthday photos that we can think of using candles or sparklers or whatever, but let's leave those foil balloons behind. No. And since we're talking about Save the Turtles, I'm going to mention number 13, which is new Halloween outfits. Um, you'll see why in a second. But I haven't bought new Halloween outfits in a long time because honestly, if you can DIY one using the clothes that you have at home or makeup and get creative, then kudos to you. That is impressive. It's not as impressive if you went to the store and just bought your Halloween costume. Here's a picture of me this year, or I guess last year, Halloween, dressed as a visco girl, and I made this outfit using an old tie-dye shirt that I already had in my Mario Badescu spray. Moving on to some self-care items, I want to talk about shaving cream or shaving foam. And I can't really speak to guys because they use their shaving foam on their face, and I don't shave my face, so can't comment on that. But when it comes to shaving other parts of my body, I just use soap because shaving cream is supposed to make your body slick and slippery so that the razor can slide easily. You know what else does that? Soap. So you can use soap as a substitute for this. I've been doing it pretty much my whole life and I know some people use shaving cream for that baby soft feeling afterwards. So what I do instead is I just put coconut oil on right after I come out of the shower. And you guys know how much I love coconut oil. I made a whole video on it. You can watch that if you want. But that is my alternative to buying shaving cream. And again, like the air freshener, it's packaged in metal, which is super resource intensive to get out of the ground. So I like to avoid as many of those things as I can. The next one on the list is sheet masks. And this one is more of a personal preference. Remember at the start of the video, I was saying, I'm not a minimalist and I do buy things I like and I don't buy things that I don't like or I don't need. So for example, things like books. A lot of minimalist series on YouTube that talk about things that I don't buy say that they don't buy books and they like to buy audiobooks instead or, um, or books on their Kindle. Meanwhile, I really enjoy the feeling of a paper book, so I'm gonna continue to buy books. So when it comes to sheet masks, if you absolutely love sheet masks, continue to buy those if they bring you happiness. But for me, um, they're, they're disposable and I try to cut as much of that out of my life as I can and I have been sticking to clay masks. So I use the Aztec Indian healing clay. My sister put me on that. Absolutely love it. Um, or I use the Lush face masks that come in those little black pots that you can actually return to the store. You return five of those black pots back to the store and you get a free face mask once you do that. So great circular packaging system there. Love it. Love to buy into that. Um, my sister also DIYs a lot of masks that work for her, so that's something you could do. But I personally like to cut sheet masks out of my beauty routine. Next up, we have dry shampoo. 
Now, I have never bought dry shampoo because when my hair gets greasy, I just wash it. And trust me, you can, you can do the same. I used to have waist length hair and I still never use dry shampoo. If it got greasy, I washed it. If it got greasy and I didn't have time to wash it, I just put it up in a ponytail or a braid and I was good to go. I've actually heard that dry shampoo can make your greasiness and even dandruff worse for a while before you wash your hair again. So it seems kind of counterintuitive. I would avoid it. That's just my suggestion. Next, we have makeup brushes and makeup brush cleaner. Again, a personal preference thing. If you are a makeup enthusiast and makeup gets you excited, um, buy that new makeup brush that can help you do your makeup better, make you happy, do it. But if you're like me, and this is pretty much as good as your makeup gets, you don't need to be buying new brushes if they get old and you can just clean them. And you don't need to be buying cleaner because you can make makeup brush cleaner at home. Again, in my coconut oil video, I kind of showed you guys, but Long story short, water, apple cider vinegar, and dish soap. Make that solution and just swish your brush around and it will be good as new. The last three items on my list are a little miscellaneous, but we'll get right into it. So we have mason jars. If you're buying these, why? Um, when you buy your pasta sauce or your pickles or your olives, um, you get them in a nice jar and you can wash that jar out and reuse it over and over and over again. Glass is very resilient. Um, you don't need to be paying for these at Michael's or whatever craft store you go to. Next is disposable oven items. I don't know why they sell those disposable aluminium trays when you can just buy a baking tray that you can use over and over again. It just, it confuses me because we don't use plastic plates or plastic forks at home and with the same logic, why do you use disposable oven items? Buy yourself a nice baking tray or um, muffin sheet and just clean it out when you're done with it like you do with the rest of your cutlery and crockery. You don't need to be using the disposable ones, especially considering that aluminium is, again, very resource intensive, very energy intensive to get it out of the ground. So even if it is being recycled, you can't forget about the energy that went into making the item in the first place. The last item on this list is tourist souvenirs. And this one is interesting to me because I used to be a consumer of these. I'd go on vacation and I'd be that girl that got snow globes or like fridge magnets, whatever. But then I realized like when I look at the snow globe, I don't think, wow, this snow globe, this really encompasses my whole trip. I find that taking pictures is much better. I take pictures, I print them out and I display them and that's much more representative of my trip. And if I want to buy a souvenir, I'll definitely check that souvenir to see where it was made because you'll find that a lot of souvenirs are actually made not in the country you're visiting. So they're made in China or Indonesia. So you want to be careful of that because it's not really representative of where you went if it wasn't even made there. If you want to buy a souvenir, go to local artisans or there's often those street artists that are painting art. Painting art. They're painting live in front of you and then they sell their painting. Great way to support the local economy. Another option is postcards. I recently went to Portugal and I sent my boyfriend a little postcard from Lisbon um, and we love it. And they also double as a great form of wall art because they're so pretty. So that's another alternative. That is it for today's video, guys. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Um, let me know in the comments if you also don't buy some of these things, or if you do buy some of these things and they bring value to you, I want to know. Um, and I hope you guys continue staying safe, and I will see you guys on the next video. Bye. Bye. Bye.